So there has been a lot of controversy around the M1 iPad Pro, especially the 16 gig spec'd out version, as many of us in the tech space were disappointed to say the very least. Not so much with the hardware, I mean, let's be honest, the M1 Pro is hands down the best tablet ever built, full stop. In terms of hardware, but it's being crippled by its software. I did a big rant about it, which I then somewhat nuanced once I tested the beta version of iPadOS 15. I will link to both of those videos in the description below. But while we all had something to say about the software limitations, we all generally agreed that the hardware was on point. But is that really true? Let's ramble. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. So like I said in the introduction, the hardware on the new iPad, especially the high-end model is insane. 16 gigs of RAM on a tablet is unheard of. It has Apple's mega successful M1 chip on board, the same chip as Apple's new computers, and we all agree this chip is fantastic. The mini LED screen is phenomenal. Sure, there's the blooming issue, but that is actually easily explained, so not really an issue for me. The one thing I was most excited about more than any of the other specs was the new Thunderbolt 4 port on the iPad Pro. That to me sounded game-changing. Apple marketed this port as being the next best thing, showing off the iPad connected to large external monitors, boasting the full aspect ratio. The iPad Pro comes with an HDR screen that resembles that of Apple's $6,000 Pro Display XDR. And we all expected it to connect to external monitors, which would have instantly made the iPad Pro much more usable for professionals. Sadly, we now know that not only can we not get the full aspect ratio, we're also still stuck with those hideous black bars. We also still can't actually extend the iPad's monitor. All we can do is mirror the screen, which to me is totally pointless. Why would I want two of the same things on my monitors? So that sucks, and hopefully Apple and the developers will fix those things in future updates. But hey, at least we now have an ultra-fast Thunderbolt 4 port on our iPads which should give us amazing speeds, right? LumaFusion, which is currently the closest thing to Final Cut Pro on the iPad, had announced the ability to edit videos straight off SSD drives, so to have those lightning fast Thunderbolt speeds would be amazing. So I decided to put it to the test and transfer some files from a Thunderbolt SSD drive to the iPad to see how fast and how good the new Thunderbolt port really is. To do this, I'm using the Lassie Rugged SSD, which is a top of the line Thunderbolt drive. I did a whole video on it, testing it extensively against other top drives like the Samsung X5, and it comes out on top. It's expensive, but it's a very reliable, ultra fast drive. So at least we'll know that the drive we're using today will not form the bottleneck. To make sure it reaches the speeds it's supposed to reach, let's first test it on my M1 Mac mini, which also has Thunderbolt 4 ports on board. But before we do that, let me just put on my sponsor glasses and say a big thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. If you use an iPad Pro, chances are you'll also be using an iPhone and those things ain't cheap. And the first thing I do when I get an iPhone is slap on a case. Obviously, you didn't spend all that money on a phone just to make it look hideous, so you're gonna be looking for a good looking case that also offers premium protection. And Casetify definitely knows how to create just that. If you've been to this channel before, you know I like my leather accessories, so I'm really digging the new Lux Leather iPhone case lineup Casetify developed. Not only do they look and feel amazing, they're made out of cruelty-free, sustainable, and biodegradable leather that is made out of 90% recycled materials and shipped in 100% recyclable packaging. They offer solid protection all around and have this fiber suede lining on the inside so you don't scratch up your phone. The cases also have an antimicrobial coating called Defensify, which keeps your phone germ-free and we all know how important that is right now. The coolest thing though is that you can fully customize your leather case on the Casetify website. You can choose different layouts and fonts so you can give your own unique touch to it. Go to casetify.com slash Patrick Rambles today to get 15% off your new leather case. Right, so let's get to these speed tests. First, I'll test the drive on the Mac so we know what speeds it will reach as a frame of reference when we test it on the iPad. It's supposed to max out at around 2800 Mbps. First, we need to go select the drive, pick the Lassie and hit start. Yeah, 26, 27, that's close enough for a test like this. 
So as you can see, the drive reaches roughly the same speeds as advertised on the box when it's plugged in directly into the Mac. But will it do the same when we plug it directly into the iPad Pro? Now, I always use the Blackmagic speed test for this on my Mac computers, but unfortunately, such an app doesn't really exist for the iPad Pro, so we'll have to do a real-world transfer test to determine the speed of the iPad's Thunderbolt port compared to the same port on the Mac Mini. So I'll take a 4K video file of around 25 gigs and transfer it from this external terabyte drive to the hard drive of the Mac and then onto the iPad. And we'll time it both times to see what the difference is. All right, let me just reset the stopwatch, drag this 25 gig file onto my desktop and start the stopwatch at the same time. And done. Nice and fast. That's about 2,500 Mbps, so pretty much as advertised. Now, let me just grab my iPad, stick the cable of the LC into the iPad, and drop the file from the LACI onto the iPad and time it the exact same way. Wow, it is taking its time. It takes the iPad almost twice as long. So while the speeds are still impressive for a tablet, the Thunderbolt port on the iPad certainly does not do the drive justice and it seems to be about half as fast as the same ports on the M1 Mac Mini. Now, some of you will have noticed that I have the developer beta version of iPadOS 15 installed, which by the way, is why we could see the progress wheel, which we finally received after years and years of begging. Anyway, some people said, yeah, well, the Thunderbolt port on the iPad is slow because iPadOS needs to be updated first. Well, I have updated it and it still doesn't deliver anywhere near top speeds. Now, of course, we do need to bear in mind that this is only a developer beta one version and beta versions of software tend to be buggy, especially the very first version. So to be totally fair, we'll have to run these tests again once iPadOS 15 officially launches. But as it stands, the Thunderbolt port on the iPad does not live up to its name. I do hope Apple will fix this and work towards making this an actual usable Thunderbolt 4 port. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.